in the middleweight division. Now entering the octagon is an AFC penetration expert with a mixed martial arts record of 9-1-0. and Standing six feet tall, weighing in at 184 pounds, fighting out of Seattle, Washington. Please welcome Ivan Salivary. Ivan Salivary set for his second appearance here in the UFC. His first one was a good one. He is great at submissions and he can strike. He likes to strike. He trains out of Seattle, Washington at AMC Pancreation under Matt Hume. The former hook and shoot middleweight champion trying to up his UFC record to 2 0. He'll have to defeat the Olympic silver medalist to do so. God is a wrestling expert with a mixed martial arts record of 7 1 and 0. He stands 6 feet tall, weighing in at 183 pounds. Fighting out of Eagle Creek, Oregon. Please welcome Matt the Law. He will make another attempt at laying down the law in the octagon. Linlin, an Olympic silver medalist in wrestling, has worked on his striking. And you can't train with anyone better than Randy Couture. His conditioning improved, his attitude readjusted, as Linlin coming off his first ever loss in the octagon as we take a look at the tail of the tape, middleweight matchup between Salivary and Linlin, brought to you by Trim Spa. 32 years old is Linlin, one year younger is Salivary. There is not another single difference in this matchup as far as the numbers are concerned. Both have experienced just one loss in the octagon. Both will be officiated this time by our referee, Kip Kohler. go middleweight matchup Lindland works some striking also at the Militich camp in preparation for this fight with Salivary who was so dominant in his UFC debut against Semenov in Bozier City nice way to check the leg and a takedown already puts Ivan Salivary on his on his back this is where Salivary is extremely dangerous and we pointed out in Lindland's last match, he does like to extend those arms a bit much. Maybe he has learned from those mistakes. Now he was overcome and eventually submitted by Murillo Bustamante after Lindland had defeated Militic and Baroni and Almeida and Yoji Anjo. He looked unstoppable. But Bustamante certainly made Matt DeLaw Lindland look human. See Ivan Solibary showing how well you can strike. Look out! And Lindman moved out of the way. He could sense it. And now he's trying to get the back. And he has it. Look at the aggressiveness of Lindman. Can Lindman get a choke in? Now this is where Lindman likes to be, Jeff, in the Greco style. Just like Randy Couture. Clinching and dirty boxing opportunities, if you will. He's trying to waist lock him to get the suplex. There's a knee to the outside the left side. Don't hold the fence. Whoa. And he brings down Salivary. Good pace so far being shown by Matt Lindless. Oh, look out, Nibon. Watch out. Look at that. Oh, if he pulls it through, he could be in some trouble. Lindland knows and avoids again. Punch him. These, I'm sorry, these two have trained together before in the past in grappling mainly. 
And Ivan Solivary has got the better of Matt Lindley, but this is not grappling. This is where all aspects of the game are thrown into the mix. And we're seeing a good job of fighting being done by an aggressive Matt Lindley. Now Salivary saying about Matt Lindley, he felt he was a little one-dimensional. But he knows the ground and pound wrestling is one of his huge dimensions. And he's totally elite at what he does, and that is the Greco and the ground and pound combination. Watch the leg. Yep. But the submission advantage certainly belongs to Salivary. Oh, he opened him up that time with the left. He opened him up. Good shot by Matt Lindland. Ivan has a, a small cut, small trickle. Looks like underneath. Oh, oh. Look at the shot. Three of them with the right hand, and that forces Lindland to come back down and close the gap. Man, Lindland, I don't think has ever looked this aggressive. Well, you know, he and Couture both coming off losses. Both training partners, both had never lost in the UFC. I can just imagine what the last couple of months have been like for Team Quest. I mean, I'm going to think the training took a little different taste. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, you got culture. I mean, we spoke to him. He was pumped up about the new training. That's Lindland. Lands a crushing right. Oh, you know what? Salary coming up and getting shots from his back. Very impressive. I do know that Matt Humans has drilled his guys on striking from the ground, from their back, from inside their car. They'll, they'll throw the forearms, they'll throw knees. And Salivary's doing a great job of landing from the bottom. Well, those couple of shots are keeping Salivary in this round one. Under 90 seconds remains. This middleweight matchup scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Close guard on Matt Lindland. Solivary break the legs loose momentarily and work him up high. This is where he gets dangerous. The minute Lindland extends his arm is when Solivary strikes. Does so he have room to spin so close to the fence the way he wants to? There's another strike from his back. Forcing Lindland to try to close the gap again. He kind of ate a knee there, Jeff. Now Lindland was the first guy to come up with a good defense to what some people call a Brazilian butt scoop. Because if you put one knee down, uh, Solidary is not allowed to strike upwards. Good tactical fight. That one knee down would be considered kicking, you know, the downed opponent. And thus the Second reference that Jeff working. was making to avoid being shot. But if you're standing up, your opponent has free game, even from his backside, to try to strike upon you. 20 seconds remains in round one. Linlin in the red trunks and Salivary in the brown trunks. Linlin really controlling the pace here in round one, although Salivary got those couple of nice rights from his back and landed into the face of Matt Linlin, round one complete. The nice pace, wasn't it? Yeah, very nice pace. A lot of action. And Linlin. Coming out as a whole different fighter. Relax and breathe, relax and breathe. Relax and breathe. Give me the rag. Give me the rag. Now we know Salivary slick on the ground. And you see Lindland. Look at this. Salivary spins. Lindlin does the smart thing and hooks his foot inside the thigh. Solivary can't get extension on the leg for the submission, so he gives it up rather than try for it. Good submission defense by Matt Lindlin. Matt has always said he doesn't feel anyone can out-wrestle him, and with his accomplishments as a five-time national champion, three-time Pan Am champion and World Cup champion, along with his silver medal, one would think that would be true. He's worked his stand-up, as we mentioned before. Solivary, sometimes he'll get a... Oh, oh high kick, black though. Oh, mouthpiece, mouthpiece forgotten by Salivary. So that's a momentum breaker for Salivary. Yeah. Yep, Lindland was like, what, what? <laughs> Nothing happened. Matt is very focused, a new intensity for this fight. They know each other's groundwork inside out. 
The stand-up is where it gets interesting. It sure does. That's where Couture and Linlin have taken a weakness in the last few years and tried to make it something of a positive. Oh, he ate a knee there and goes for the clinch. And Solibary striking on the rebound. And there's those double underhooks. And that's what they're known for, taking your feet out from underneath you. And he has side control on Solibary. Side control on the fence. Salivary showing its back. Linland's got to be careful not to put his leg through there again. Solibary will roll for Nibar. He's trying to move over and set up for it. And now Linland has a hook in. In, in, in. There you go. Get your keyboard in, run. Solibary working uh, for Keith or Kimura possibly, arm lock. And Linland gets out once again. Is there a danger if you're Salivary of being submitted by Matt Linden? It's guard, it's guard now. There's always that danger, especially with uh, at the pace that these guys learn, the game changes all the time. A fighter becomes a better fighter every time he walks in and out of the octagon. Percentage-wise, though, certainly you would think Salivary has a much higher percentage chance of finishing by submission than Linlin. We haven't seen Linlin submit very often. Oh, look at this. Linlin on his back. Yes, and this is Salivary trying to move in to side control. Now this is where Salivary is going to be extremely dangerous. We were talking about the submission advantage. And I fully agree. I've got to give that advantage to Ivan Salivary. Salivary prominently displayed his groundwork in his decisive win over Andre Semenov in his debut in Bossier City at UFC 37. And he's going to look for something here. He's looking to put the hooks in. Yep. He's got one. If he can swing it. Oh. Linlin avoids. Good job by Matt Linlin. Beautiful display of wrestling. Remember a lot of fighters have said to me before, Jeff, that they work submissions, not so much to perhaps get one of their own, but to learn submission defense as a result of working for submissions. And Linlin's submission defense good so far halfway through the match. And now he's raining down some rights on the backside of the head. Uh, by Ivan Salivary. Oh, guillotine choke. Oh, nice knee by Linlin. That's probably Linlin's most dangerous strike, is the knee, and he just missed with the uppercut. High kick again. Ivan looked a little bit wobbly coming out of that. As Linlin sees some momentum here. Gotta keep those hands up. Linlin was dropping those hands for a moment. Salivary, the hands on the knee. He's also looking at the clock on the big screen, which could be an indication he's a little bit tired. Oh, good duck under there, but still the takedown. And Linlin feels it. Does Linlin have a chance to try to stop it here? Salivary looks gassed. He does. He's bending down, putting his hands on his knees. Looking to see just how much is left, and there's plenty of time, a minute and 15 seconds. He kind of just fell into that takedown almost. But can Linlin finish it with anything but ground and pound on the ground? That's the question. Nice roll out once again from Solidary. Linlin goes down to his knees. The former equestrian eventer, Matt Linlin, not horsing around today. I'll tell you what, he is certainly trying to prove that he is still a force to be reckoned with in the middleweight division. Work his way back to having another title shot. Now this is one of the interesting fights as the, uh, the betting lines went back and forth as to who was the underdog. As it stands right now, it's Matt Lindland, but he is uh, proving everyone wrong. Final 10 seconds as Linlin again controlling the pace here in round two. <laughs> Salivary had his one moment there, Jeff, but could not take advantage. And I think that shot kind of wobbled him a little bit. And I, he's looking like he needs this minute rest.
Listen to me. Listen to me. You can't lay in your guard on your back. You gotta open your guard this whole round. You gotta keep your guard open. Take a deep breath. Do you wanna win this item? Yes. Okay, listen to me. You cannot lay in your guard on your back. As soon as you go to the ground, you have to move and you have to punch him and you have to either turtle over. And here we look at Ivan, that roll, pushes Linlin off and Linlin goes to his back instead of trying to stand up. This is where uh, he got the side control. Knee to the midsection by Solivari, and wow. And there's where he looked a little bit wobbly. And a collision. Solivari ducked. And Lindland raining down the shots, but was unable to capitalize. We begin the third and final round. Matt Hume telling Salivary he cannot lay in the guard. He has to throw shots and, and work diligently. The judges could have easily given both rounds one and rounds two to Matt Lindland. Salivary started to look a little bit more refreshed, landing a leg kick. And that punch definitely stunned him. Oh. There's a good combination of right and left. Nice one-two. Followed up by another leg kick. He, he's trying to go high. But Lindland's ready each time. He's got that Thai boxing background. Tried to go in with the straight kick and missed. I think Lindland's got the high kick figured out. Look yeah. at Ivan. Good head movement. Ducking out of the way of those punches. Solivari, a very, very big 185 pounder. Can put up to about uh, 18 pounds on as he goes high once again. He'll weigh in at 185. Come in very big. It's a good matchup. Middleweights with Bustamante at the top of the ladder right now in the UFC. Lindland's only loss to the champion. Oh, look at... Wow. The axe kick misses. Lindland was shaking his head like, no, those don't, those don't hurt me. Well, Salivari has to do something here. Three minutes and 15 seconds remains. That one connected. And that'll leave a mark on the outside of Matt Lindland's right leg. Looks like they want to play a little bit of boxing game here. Yep, it sure does. Lindland happy to cooperate. Low leg kick by Salivari. Salivari trying to set up for that one good combination, Jeff. Yeah, he may be. But Lindland is... Uh, man, this guy's just hold, holding off everything. We've seen some good shots going from Lindland as well. Yeah, Salivari. Lindland knows the high kick's coming. Two and a half minutes. Lindland recently nominated as a finalist for the Sullivan Award, given uh, the top amateur athlete in the U.S. Based on all his wrestling accomplishments as a pro mixed martial artist, he's trying to get his fifth win. Now Lindland trying to throw a leg or two in there. Well, Lindland can play this game because I, I think he's ahead. And there's the clinch, but just for a moment. He's pounding away at the right leg. You can see the wealth starting to form on the outside of Lindland's right leg. You don't want to take a whole lot of off. Oh, just missed with the left. Lindland working that right jab to try to set up the big left. And missed with that cross. Solidary should try to counter those uh, light jabs. Maybe he's trying to trick Lindlin with those leg kicks to drop in his hand so he can work the high kick again. Once again, Solidary goes high and once again it's defended. One minute and eight seconds and Salivary has to make something happen. This round totally on the feet. After two rounds in which Salivary spent a lot of time 
on his backside, courtesy of Matt Lindland, the Olympic silver medalist in wrestling. Lindland's got a smile on his face, Jeff. Now, once again, he took a kick and just laughed it off. And there we go. The Finally, ball. they hook, and down he goes. Solidary trying to go for the leg. And Lindland keeps busy and avoids. Now he looks for the arm, and Lindland pulled it out. Look at these escapes and transitions. 30 seconds remains. Third and final round. Solibary rolled for that knee bar. Lindland gets out. Solibary went for a triangle or an arm bar. And Lindland was wise to it. And now we're back on the feet. It appears we will go to the judges' scorecards. One final takedown, perhaps. Yes. And that will do it. A strong comeback performance after his first defeat in the Octagon by Matt the Law Lindland. Now, Matt Lindlin certainly needed an impressive performance, not only for himself, but for the UFC brass, returning off a day in which he was made to look very human in his loss in Bossier City in the title matchup. And he certainly looked good. You won all of them. You know what? Good fight, Ivan. Good job. And let's take a look back at some of these transitions. There's the clinch. Solivary throws a knee. And here you'll watch Solivary try and go for that leg. You see him looking at it. He wants it bad. Lindland gets out of it. Tries to pass the guard. Solivary trying to hook the triangle in. Lindland powers out. Solivary rolls out. And they're back again. Now that is a hell of a transition. Now Solivary, as you said, very slick on the ground. Very well versed in submissions, but could never work them against Matt Lindland. And you can see the disappointment in the face of Salivary. I think he knows what the judge's decision will be. Let's find out. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Jeff Mullen scores it 29-28. Judge Cecil Peoples scores it 29-28. And Judge Douglas Crosby scores it 30-28 for the winner by unanimous decision, Matt the Law Lindland. Lindland is back as this weight division continues to heat up. And I know Baroni's looking for a piece of Lindland down the road. Turn around, bro. Turn around, big guy. Matt Lindland back on the winning track. He's upstairs with Ryan Bennett. All right, he is back. Matt Lindland, your civil medalist uh, wrestling. And I tell you what, Matt, how important, how good does it feel? You came out very aggressive in those first two rounds to come back and get a win. Uh, it feels good to get a win. I wanted to be a little more exciting for the crowd, especially after my last fight. Uh, I just wish I would have been on pay-per-view. I probably would have had to step it up a notch. He's throwing me on an undercard. I might be boring. So next time, put me on the pay-per-view, and I'll do these guys like I did the rest of them. So. How devastating was that last loss for you against Bustamante? Yeah, it hurt because it was for the title. It was, uh, you know, made me three-time silver. So, um, But other than that, you know, I mean, I took it as a learning experience. Hopefully I came in and fought better. I was more confident standing. Um, I didn't feel like I was ever in danger on my feet. I was, you know, always leery of what Ivan can do on the mat because he's very spectacular down there and he's he's tricky. <laughs> Ultimately, would you like a rematch with with Murillo? Yeah, give me a rematch with Murillo. I'll get ready. I'll come out. I'm going to beat him when we get that title. Right, he's back. Matt Lillen gets a big win. Well, his main goal in life is to be a world champion. He lost at the Olympics by one point. He lost at the Worlds by one point. He lost to Bustamante, but he won tonight, and he's back on track. Uh, not a chance in hell.